Welcome to Classic Comedy of Old Time Radio. I'm your host, Ron Ecklebarger. Here's the life of Riley. This is episode number 128 of the life of Riley, entitled Job in South America. Today's show originally aired on October 26th, 1946. On the whole, Chester A. Riley is a happy man. He's got a good wife, two fine children, a pleasant little home, and a job. But there's a fly in the ointment, a human fly by the name of Gus Hawkins, the foreman at the plant where Riley's employed. For instance, last Monday... Riley! Riley! Uh, yes, boss, yes, Mr. Hawkins. Ain't you through with that drill press yet? Hurry it up. Uh, yes, sir. And when you're through, I want you to fix that cutting machine and then clean the machine shop and then... Now, wait that. a minute, Hawkins. What am I, a horse? Oh, so you don't like this job, eh? Oh, no, no, no. Believe me, I'm a very happy horse. And then on Tuesday... Riley! Uh, yes, boss. Yes, Mr. Hawkins. Look what you did to this machine. Why, you haven't got the brains of a three-year-old. I have so. And then on Wednesday... Hey, Riley, quick. Here comes the foreman. Hide my cigar. But, Gillis, wait, don't give me that cigar. What will I do with it? I... Riley! Uh, uh, yes, boss. Yes, Mr. Hawkins. Smoking on the job again, eh? Uh, no, no, I wasn't smoking. Don't lay. I saw you hide that cigar. No, I didn't hide no cigar. You didn't, eh? Then why are your pants on fire? And now it's Thursday morning, and we find Riley at the breakfast table pouring out his troubles to the family. Nag, nag, nag. That's all that Hawkins does. Always picking on me. Daddy, why don't you tell this Mr. Hawkins off? I did tell him. Hawkins, I said, you can't treat me like this. I'm a human being. And he said, prove it. (laughs) He had me there. After all, I can't carry my birth certificate to work. Well, why don't you just bust him in the nose, Pop? Junior, a gentleman don't bust another gentleman in the nose. Especially when the other gentleman happens to be the heavyweight champion of the riveting department. And your father's right, Junior. In a case like this, it's always best to use diplomacy. That's right. And where I come from, diplomacy means only one thing. Wait for a dark night with a rock in each hand. Right. Well, you know you don't mean that. Well, no, I don't. But i got to do something about that foreman. He's the one who's holding me back at the plant. For five years, I've been butting my head up against a stone wall. And I ain't even made a dent in it. Well, why don't you try being pleasant to Hawkins for a change? Then maybe he'll be nice to you. But gee, I never thought of that. Well, try it once. Can't do any harm. Well, yeah. Well, 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 what'll I say? Well, you know what to say. Good morning, Mr. Hawkins. Isn't it a lovely day? Yeah, lovely day. Tell him you want to get ahead in the plant. Ahead in the plant. And you don't see the point in not being friends. So why not bury the hatchet? Buried the hatchet. That's it. The minute I get to the plant, I'm going to stop being myself and start being pleasant. So that's the plan, Gillis. You know, personally, Riley, I don't think your wife's idea is but very... there's no harm in trying. I... Here comes the foreman. Oh, uh, Riley. Uh, good morning, Mr. Hawkins. Ain't it a lovely day? Speaking as a friend, I'd love to bury the hatchet in your pointy head. <laughs> what? Oh, uh, no, uh, excuse me. I, I meant to say... I heard uh, you. And I'm glad you spoke your mind. And I was going to promote you to the machine shop. Well, from now on, you'll rot in the rivet and depart. But, but, Mr. Hawkins, wait. I didn't mean... I... Oh, gosh, Gillis, now I've done it. Yeah, well, look on the bright side. So he ain't gonna promote you. At least he's gonna let you rot. <laughs> I was only trying to be friends. Oh, friendship. It can only lead to trouble. Look at me and my wife. We was friends once. Then we got married. <laughs> now I'll never get anywhere. Not with that Hawkins around. Of course you won't. Riley, my friend, in this land of equal opportunity, there's only one way to get ahead. Marry the boss's daughter. But I always believed a man should marry for love. Well, you can love money, can't you? <laughs> oh, lunch. Come on, Riley. Let's eat over behind the tool shed where the wind can't blow the cards out of our hands. <laughs> hey, look, Gillis. Look what's here on the bulletin board. Riley, this is no time to read. It's our lunch hour. Read on the company's time. Now, wait a minute. This is interesting. 
For some time, this company has been planning to establish its own rubber research station in Santo Maringo in the interior of South America. Wanted immediately, an employee with a sense of daring and adventure and the ability to undergo a few minor hardships for six months to supervise construction of a landing field. Applied to C.J. Stevenson, president. Oh, for the love of Mike. Are they starting that stuff again? For years, they've been sending guys down into that jungle. They have? Sure. Stevenson don't like to talk about it. Nobody ever comes back. <laughs> oh, you're kidding, Gilly. Okay, so a couple of guys come back. There was one guy who was in that jungle all by himself for six whole months. Then he come home. Yeah, well, well, how was it? What did he say? They never found out. He forgot how to talk. <laughs> oh, I don't believe it. Oh, it's it. murder down there in that jungle. That burning sun beating down on you day after day, the sweat pouring off of you by the gallon. You know what that does to the human body? I guess you lose a little weight. Little? Say, do you know Fatso McGillicuddy? No. Well, Fatso was a guy who weighed 250 pounds. He volunteered. Six months later, Fatso comes back. See, that's him over there by the water cooler. Hi, Skinny! What are you, Julius? Holy smoke. There's nothing left of him. <laughs> oh, it can't be. What are you trying to hand me? I've been around here five years. I never heard anything like that. Oh, you never heard. Stevenson's keeping it quiet. But I got my ear to the ground, and I pick up plenty of dirt. <laughs> Gee, that jungle must be awful, with them monsoons and tearing tortillas. Yeah, and all night long, the natives beating on that drum. Boom, 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 boom. Can you imagine a thousand Gene Coopers? <laughs> Gee, I wouldn't wish that job on my worst enemy if I... Oh, uh, Gillis. What's the matter, Randy? Quiet, I'm thinking. Oh, yeah. I'm thinking, too. Gillis, are you thinking what I'm thinking? If you're thinking what I'm thinking. I only hope the foreman ain't thinking we're thinking what we're thinking. <laughs> Gillis, lend me a pencil. Now, remember, Riley, you got to be clever about this. Leave that to me. Well, here's a pencil. I already wetted the point. Let's see. <laughs> Dear Mr. Stevenson. As a loyal employee, I wish to state that my beloved foreman, Gus Hawkins, wishes to volunteer for the South American job. But he is too bashful to speak up. As his friend, I am speaking up for him. And I hope you take advantage of this tip. Believe me, if anybody deserves this, he does. Yours with love, Chester A. Riley. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you sent for me, Mr. Stevenson? Riley, I want to thank you for that note you sent me about hockey. He's going, Mr. Stevenson? He's going? Oh, yes, he's going. Oh, but you were right about him. I have never seen anybody so bashful. Kept trying to change the subject. <laughs> Why, well, I practically had to order him to go. Uh, that's fine, as long as he's going. <laughs> Good old Hawkins. Little does he know what I've done for him. <laughs> oh, he knows all right. <laughs> I showed him your note, and he rushed right out looking for you. <laughs> hey, hey, Ted. Uh, how soon is he leaving? Well, there's still a few things I have to talk over with him. Listen, he's the man for the job. You won't regret it. After all, what kind of a man do you need for this job? A guy with plenty of muscle and no brains. That's true. A guy without imagination. Mm-hmm. The kind of a guy, if he went away from the plant for six months, you wouldn't even know he was gone. Riley, I've just had another thought. <laughs> Oh, I'm going to South America. <laughs> Riley, what are you saying? Oh, Pop, you're kidding. Stop joking, Dad. There's no joke. I'm sailing Saturday. I don't want to go, but I've got it. Oh, this is ridiculous. Mr. Stevenson may be the boss, but he can't order you to South America. He didn't order me. I volunteered. You offered to go? Well, it was his idea, and he talked me into it. <laughs> You know me, I ain't got a mind of my own, so I use anybody's. But, but what about us, Riley? You'll be gone for six months. Oh, we'll miss you awfully, Daddy, dear. Especially Sundays. Who will sit at the head of the table and carve the roast? Yes. Who will I turn to if things go wrong? Who will put out the garbage? Thanks, son. 
can't go. But I can't back out now. Why do they have to pick on you, Daddy? Well, Pop, you always said you were a key man. You said they couldn't build a single plane without you. And they can't. They'll find that out. Wait till they start inspecting them planes and they find out a certain nut is missing. They'll start yelling for me. <laughs> If you're so indispensable, then put your foot down. You tell Stevenson you're not going. I can't, Peg. I just can't. Look on the bright side. It's only six months. It's my big opportunity. It may mean promotion. I'll be able to do things for you and the kids. Babs can go to college. Vassar. And when Junior gets out of high school, he'll join her there. Oh, Oh, Daddy, we don't care about that. We'd rather have you with us. That's right, Pop. We want you. Oh, why am I so lovable? So you march right back to Mr. Stevenson and tell him you absolutely refuse to go. Peg, are you ordering me to go to Stevenson? No, you're volunteering. So that's the situation, Mr. Stevenson. I can't go. You can't go? Nonsense. No, no, I really can't go. Well, I've made all the arrangements. I booked your passage. I... Oh, I'm disappointed in you, Riley. I thought you had loyalty to the firm. Well, you know I'm loyal. Every time I quit here to work somewhere else and they fired me, didn't I always come back here? (laughs) You call it loyalty to volunteer for a job and then withdraw? I know, but a jungle... Oh, that's it. You're afraid. Has somebody been filling your head with a lot of stories about the burning sun and the giant mosquitoes and the hostile natives? No, no. Why should I be afraid of the burning sun or giant mosquitoes or hostile natives? After all, for the last five summers, ain't I been going to Ocean Park? Fine, then. It's all settled. But, but boss... You'll feel differently once you get underway. Believe me, boss, if it was up to me, I'd go in a flash. But my wife and kids, they just won't hear of you. Oh, the family. Is that all? <laughs> Let me have a little talk with them tonight. Oh, okay, boss, but it won't do any good. They won't hear of my going. It's breaking their hearts. You see, I ain't like other fathers. They treat me just like one of the family. <laughs> What's the matter, Mom? You look worried. Children, I've been thinking... Maybe we haven't been fair to your father about this job in South America. Why, what do you mean, Mother? Well, I mean the way we've been objecting to his going. Well, gosh, Mom, you want Pop to go? Oh, no, of course not. Why, we'll miss him terrible. But, well, this may be the big opportunity he's been waiting for. That's true. It's the first time the company's taken any interest in Daddy. And I don't think it's fair to stand in his way. And he seems to set on it. So if he brings the subject up again, let's all pretend we're glad he's going. I think you're right, Mother. Now, you understand, Junior? We won't let on how we really feel. Okay, Mom. Gosh, it's it's funny to think of Pop going to South America. Well, I have to teach him some Spanish. Can you imagine Pop speaking Spanish with a Brooklyn accent? (laughs) (laughs) I bet if Daddy goes to a bullfight down there, he'll yell, Moy to the bum! (laughs) (laughs) Now, you just let me talk to them, Riley. Well, okay, boss, but it's no use. They won't let me go. Why, right now, they're in there crying their eyes out. (laughs) Did you say they were crying? Well, why, they're hysterical. You you just come in and ask them. Oh, Oh, Riley, why didn't he hear you? Oh, hello, Mr. Stevenson. Good evening, Mrs. Riley. Good evening, Mr. Stevenson. Peg, I want you to tell Mr. Stevenson how you feel about me going to South America. Well... Well, now, come on, Dublin, the truth now. I insist. Well, I think it's the most wonderful opportunity. You hear that, boss? She thinks it's the most wonderful... (laughs) Peg, what what are you saying? Now, don't you worry about the children and I. We won't... Wait a minute, Peg. Let the children speak for themselves. Babs, what do you say? Oh, Daddy, it's the chance of a lifetime. Babs, what are you saying? Oh, oh, oh. you see, Riley, and you are worried. Now, I'll have your... Wait a minute, Mr. Stevenson. Junior's a member of this family, too. He's got a right to speak. Junior, please, what do you say? South America, take him away. Well, Riley tried to get rid of his nagging foreman by maneuvering him into a six-month job in the jungle. You. Misery. But for Riley's sake, the family is pretending they're glad he's going. 
Right now, Peg and the children are packing for him. Here's Pop's shirts, Mom. And here's his socks and the Spanish dictionary. Good. Now hurry up and clear out the rest of the drawers. Uh, fine thing. Hurry up, she says. My family can't wait to get rid of me. Oh, no, Pop. Daddy, what a thing to say. Don't be silly, dear. But after all, you're sailing tonight. That's no excuse. You just can't wait to see me go. Oh, that's nonsense. No, it ain't. You even told Stevenson. Why did you do it? But, but Riley, don't you want to go to South America? Who wants to go and live in a jungle? Don't you know there's headhunters down there? And they ain't particular what kind of head it is. <laughs> Riley, we thought... You said this was your big opportunity. Why, that's why I fibbed to Mr. Stevenson. We only pretended. You said you wanted to go, so I decided to let you have your own way. My own way. After 17 years of marriage, you picked a fine time to start. <laughs> now I'm trapped. Oh, why didn't you speak up before, Daddy? Oh, well... Let's unpack, children. No, no, no. Don't unpack. I got to go through with this. But why? Just tell your boss that you can't... I can't. I backed out once already. He'll get sore and my old job's filled. I'll get fired. Let him fire you, Daddy. But I'm getting seventy-seven fifty a week. Well, so what? You can get another job, Pop. Well, they'll pay you what you were. No, we couldn't live on that. <laughs> Go on, Riley. Now phone Mr. Stevenson. No, I can't. It, it ain't only the job. It's the boys at the plant. They gave me a farewell shower. <laughs> With speeches and a going-away present. If I back out now, they'll think I'm a coward. So far, I'm the only one that knows it. But, Riley... It's no use, Peg. My head's made up. I'll just have to go to South America. Oh, I wish I knew the right thing to do. It's no use. I wouldn't do it. <laughs> I gotta go down to the Santo Maringo Consul and get my visa. Riley, I could go to Mr. Stevens. No. And... I absolutely forbid it. I got myself into this, and I'm facing it with my own face. Even if it is an ugly mess. <laughs> what a mess. Oh, what a mess. This is one hole I'll never get out of. Who oh, there, Riley? <laughs> Who's that? It is I, Digby O'Dell, the friendly undertaker. Greetings, Riley. You're looking fine. Very natural. Oh, hello, Digger. What are you doing around here? Oh, I've been swimming at the public pool with my club, the UEPLSS. UEPLSS? Yes, the Undertakers, Embalmers, and Fall Bearers Life Saving Society. <laughs> In the summer, we save lives at the beach. It's a change from the usual routine. <laughs> Say, a, a club like that does a lot of good. Oh, that's the basis of our motto. I quote, The good that you do unto people will come back to you in the end. <laughs> and so will the people. <laughs> but Riley, my friend, you seem troubled. Oh, Digger, it's terrible. I got a new job way down in the jungle in South America. Oh, why bury yourself in South America? I know lots of openings right here in town. <laughs> Well, my company needs a man in the jungle. Ah, the jungle. A deadly cobra with fangs bared, ready to strike. A ferocious leopard with dripping jaws, ready to pounce. A gigantic gorilla with hairy arms, ready to crush. I adore those Tarzan pictures. <laughs> there. It's okay. Riley, you better learn to speak Spanish. Well, Babs has been giving me some lessons. Buenos dias, that's good day. Hasta la visitor, that's see you around. <laughs> CC, that's okay. Arriba, that means down. And bajo, that means up. No, no, Riley. Arriba is up. Bajo is down. No, 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 you're wrong. Bajo is up. No, no, no. Bajo is down. <laughs> Believe me, I know how to say down in seven languages. <laughs> Bajo is down. I always get those two mixed up. Well, I gotta go get my visa now, way downtown. Like you say in Spanish, I gotta go Ariba town. Uh, no, no, I mean Bajo town. Bajo is down. Adios, amigo mio. I'd better be shoveling off. <laughs> Riley, 
Senor Riley. Uh, yeah, that's me, Chester Riley, Senor. Senor Riley, your passport and papers, they are all in order. And it is with pleasure I issue to you this visa. My countryman in Santo Maringo will show you every custody. Ah, si, si. Ah, you speak Spanish. Si, si, si. Perfect. In your language, bajo your country. <laughs> what? Bajo your country. <laughs> Adios. Bajo Santo Maringo. Down with Santo Maringo. Garcia. Si, senor. You hear he say down with our country. The insult. Cancel the visa. Call Senor Stevenson. Much better for the good neighbor policy, Senor Riley, stay home. All set, Pop. All your suitcases are in the taxi. Thanks, son. Daddy, you forgot to pack your sun helmet. Oh, yeah, yeah. It was sweet of the boys to give me this going away present. Beautiful, ain't it? That's a very thoughtful inscription. Good luck and good health. All spelled out with malaria pills. <laughs> Riley, dear, it's getting late. The boat... Yeah, I, I'd better be going. Riley, are you sure you don't want us to go to the dock with you? No. No, you stay here. It's much easier parting this way. Uh, Pop, the taxi's waiting. Yeah. Well, goodbye, sweet wife. And, uh, listen, in, in, in case I don't come back... Oh, Riley, don't talk like that. You'll come back. Yeah, but just in case I don't, you're still young. You'll be lonely. You should have someone to take my place, so... Go live with your mother. Oh, Daddy. Daddy, you'll be all right. We'll pray for you. So will I. <laughs> Goodbye, Babsy. Keep an eye on Junior. Junior, keep an eye on Babs. And when she's entertaining boyfriends in the living room, don't peek through the keyhole. I won't, Pop. In my closet, you'll find my homemade periscope that looks over the transom. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye, dear. In six months, we'll be standing right here, waiting for take you. Take care of yourself, Duncan. And take care of our two little chicks. That's the law of nature. When the rooster's away, it's up to the old hen. <laughs> well, goodbye now. Goodbye, goodbye dear. Bye. Shut the door. Goodbye. Don't look at me, and goodbye. I won't look back. Mr. Stevenson, you come to see me off. See you off? You're not going. They've canceled your visa. Boss, you mean you ain't sending me? I'm sending Hawkins. Baho, your country. I ain't going, boss. Oh, bless you, bless you. And like they say in Spanish, Baho is Mr. Stevenson. <laughs> Peg, Peg, Peg. Peg, I've come home. Did you miss me? <laughs> Please send your questions and comments to host at ClassicComedyOTR.com. Come back next Friday for another episode of The Life of Riley and check in on Monday for the next installment of My Favorite Husband. Until next time, in the words of President Murky Muffley from the movie Dr. Strangelove, Gentlemen, you can't fight in here. This is the war room. <laughs>